Hey folks, here we are again on the ranch. We're going to put in a storm cellar slash roots cellar. We, uh, we had a big storm come through a week ago. It took out some towns just northeast of us. So I think the time is now. We're going to start working on it. We're going to show you how we're going to build it. Um, there's a million ways to put these things in. We're going to give you our take on it. So follow along. Here we are milling Eastern Red Cedar, also known as Juniper. High rot resistance and wonderfully aromatic. We have a whole pile of this stuff. Okay, here we are Xing out the hole. This is a Kubota 161. It's about a 12,000 pound machine. It's a good size little machine for the ranch. It's not too big, not too small. It gets a lot done. Pulling all the topsoil off, I'm gonna put it to the side before we get under underneath that and start pulling all that overburden. Now we opted to take and build this structure outside of the hole. We did not want to build it in the hole. Once we noticed here coming up in the video, you'll see that we had some sloughing in issues. We had some rain, some unstable conditions, and we didn't want to put ourselves at risk. All right, so uh, as you can see, we're holding some water. We don't have good drainage in here yet. So I'm gonna come in here, X out a little trench, and uh, you can see we had a big old cave in. We had some rain, got soft, sloughed in. So we're gonna clean that out, put a trench in this baby, get some fabric and gravel and so on and so forth in it. So okay, here I am Xing out trench. We're gonna lay some ADS pipe, perforated ADS pipe in. I'm gonna wrap it in fabric and gravel, and then that will be topped with more three quarter minus. I shouldn't say my. That'll be topped with three quarter crushed, the whole thing. So it'll have an adequate drain underneath the whole building. Now we've opted to build this structure out of wood as an experiment to see if we can build an affordable root cellar that offers some storm protection. We realize there are better products out there for a stronger, longer lasting shelter, but at the same time, this shelter cost us less than $2,000. Didn't include all of our sweat equity. Here you see is what's called turkey grit. This is manufactured sand. We are protecting the vapor barrier that we put down on the ground above the drain field. So we shouldn't have any infiltration through the floor. We opted to tilt the walls with the excavator considering that four men could not pick them up. They were extremely heavy. The wood is still very green, and so that's gonna be taken into Come account on, later on in the building and how we're gonna dry this. There you go. The sheathing on the building is a full inch and an eighth in thickness. These are one by 10 or inch and an eighth by 10 inch Southern yellow pine. Now we know that Southern yellow pine has very little rot resistance, but in theory, no part of this structure should come in contact with earth. Just the bottom plate and those timbers we burnt will be sitting on top of crushed gravel. They're drying out. Oh, well, it's heart center. <laughs> There's not much moisture in the middle of the tree. It's all around the back. Okay, so here you see my dad and Elliot hanging 30 pound felt. There's gonna be a total of three complete full layers of that. 
topped by six mil plastic. What you see here is the framing for what we call the hallway. And the hallway is giving more coverage to the front of the building, more protection and better temperature regulation. Now we anticipate this blowing away, literally pulling away from the building and blowing away if we got hit with a storm strong enough to do so. We don't want it to cause damage to the front of the building, having that leverage and force tearing away and ripping the apart. And so this is gonna be a little hall. I'm gonna back up there and take a look down. Cladding the outside of this, just like the main building. And the dirt line will be something like about a foot over the top of the structure. As the soil comes down, we're gonna have a short wall that finishes retaining this soil. Like, Dog, watch your head. Watch your head, Pop. You have to get a nail on it. 33. What is that? You throw it underhand, not... Oh, you weirdo. <laughs> what is he doing? Tristan, all right. Here, hunt on it. We use no means of mechanical compaction. When backfilling the structure, we didn't want to put any more stress in the wall, so we just let time and water do its thing. Yeah. Wing walls, this will just help further keep back a little bit of soil from our building, allowing us a long walkway. And we do have positive drainage in every direction from this building. Tacking these up with this 15 gauge nailer, get them close, and then we come back and we're nailing them on with ring shanks out of actually a siding gun. We were using screws, but it's too damn slow.
right, this is what my dad's been working on. He found this turbine vent. Here local, good deal. Thought what a great vent to put on this thing. That thing will pull a lot of air. So we're gonna put a shutter down on the front door of the cellar and that'll be our inlet. And this is our exhaust, so. All right, a little recap here. We got the gravel in, we got some little retaining walls here. Going into the entry, we still gotta put the door on, a little bit of trim. Got a little retaining walls up here at the top. And uh, we're gonna spread a bunch of this decomposed sawdust. I say a bunch, just a light coating after we seed it. And then we're gonna top it and unroll hay on it spread a bunch of hay to help with erosion and, and uh, keep the moisture in. So what we got here, a little broadcaster. All right, so we got some Kentucky 31 fescue right here. We're gonna put on medium red clover and we have crimson clover. So that's what we're gonna be putting on there. We have an extraordinary amount. <laughs> it's gonna be very overseeded. Well, that's all right. It's looking good. A little more. What are you guys doing? Spreading hay. Hay? Okay, oh, hay. Why are you spreading hay? Give them a moisture, I think. <laughs> you think? Tristan, why are we spreading old hay? To? Oh no, it's not paying off. They're still stupid. Oh, oh, come on. Keep it from eroding. Erosion control. There we go. So, all right, getting her watered up. Got some old salvaged foam. Twist into the hole like this. Let's see, ready? Oh, it does. Now we'll get to it. Alright, so we're going to take and build a latch for this door. We're going to just use this old ratty piece of oak and we're going to use this and mill it down because, well, oak is hard and more durable, it won't wear as rapidly. And this will be a portion of the slide bolt. To be able to operate it from the inside and the outside, and uh, should be pretty simple, pretty easy. So, we'll get this thing knocked out. Okay. Okay. All right. All right, we got this guy, I think, done. We got the door stop on. We have a little detail around the plate. Last little look. So all the framing material is Southern Yellow Pine and all the shelf material is Eastern Red Cedar. So it smells pretty much amazing in here at all times. Love it. Insects don't really prefer it, so that's a bonus. And I have a ton of cedar and I just figured why not use it? So looks good.
Okay, now the door is actually open. So we messed with this for a while, trying to figure out exactly how to get the air in and out. And uh, this ended up working real slick. So like I said, putting it up, moving it down, kind of figuring out, playing with it. But it's drawn a lot of moisture out of there just since last night. So this is gonna probably run like this for a couple of weeks. And then in the future, when we get the power running there and before we close it up for good and start using it as a cellar, we'll have a dehumidifier in there that can uh, turn on and on, on and off as necessary to manage it. Okay, so finally, there it is. Thanks for watching, guys. You made it to the end of the video, and we'll see you on the next one.